Are you winning or are you losing? And your question must be, winning what? Losing what? Oh, if they didn't tell you that you are in a war. And I'm just trying to find out, are you winning or are you losing? We want to start with, uh, let's just read a verse from Romans 7. Well, and we make it verse 24. Uh, this is Paul soliloquy, and he's in, he's in a bad spot. He says, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God. But on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin, there's war, major war. So what we want to do is pray and then we'll go back to Romans chapter 1. Verse 16 and 17. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we realize we are in a war. But this war is winnable. Long as you stay on our side. And Father, I just want to thank you for an opportunity to lift up the whole concept of spiritual warfare. And Father, it's got to be fought at a different level with different weapons for a different reason, and that is to glorify you. So we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. In Romans, I think I know when the war began. In verse 16, Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. That's war. Let me tell you why it's war. Because at the point of your salvation, when you believe the gospel, you receive the gospel. The Holy Spirit took you and baptized you into Christ, sealed you in Christ, Christ, indwelt you in Christ, regenerate you in Christ. At that moment, your war began. Now, I know you thought you was in war prior to that because of the things that was happening to you in your life. But no, the war hadn't even begun. That was just the consequence and the results of sin. And by the way, you will be fighting sin. But let's talk about the war. The war is three, ant three entities. One is the world. Yes, we have no fought. We have no war with the world. Because Satan is the God of this world. And everything is in a deteriorating mode. And now you got to just fight just to live in this world. But now, there is a, another enemy. And I kind of mentioned him just then. And that is with Satan. And Satan... He makes it very clear that you are not fighting with flesh and blood. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full arm of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness against the spiritual force of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil days 
and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm. But there's one more enemy. And for me, I think this is the greatest one. And that is your own flesh. Your own flesh is waging war against your soul. Because I may have forgotten to tell you that the moment you accepted the gospel, the living God took up residence in your living soul, would put you at odds with your own flesh. The flesh wants to sin, but the soul wants to worship and serve God. And so it's a, it's a war, and it's going on. Listen what Paul says in just the first four verses, beginning at verse 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am a flesh sold in the bondage to sin. For what I'm doing, I do not understand. For I'm not practicing what I would like to do, but I am doing the very thing I hate. But if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing that the law is good. So now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. That is the major battle. If you conquer that one, you conquer the other two automatically. You can tell that you conquer Satan and you conquer the world. But it depends on what you do with your flesh. Now, we have kind of uh, talked about it once before, but I think we need to go back and talk about it again. And that is uh, Romans chapter 6. I, I just want to mention it because I think it's a foundational passage. In Romans chapter 6. And uh, hmm, uh, in verse uh, number 2. We better do verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? The way you're going to win this war, you've got to die to sin. Die to sin. I think the more we talk about it, the more we begin to understand it. So let me stay here just a minute in verse 3 it says or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death and I know that does not compute therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father so we too might walk in the newness of life. I know that don't compute. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, all that says one thing, and that is when you accept the Christ as your personal Savior, something supernatural happened to you that you may not be able to identify with. That is, when you accepted Christ and Christ put life in you, you were supernaturally catapulted back 2,000 years ago, placed in Christ. And as the text says, you were baptized into Christ Jesus having been baptized into his death. You were put in Christ. When he, like when he died, you died. When he was buried, you were buried. When he rose, you rose. And that's why it says in verse number five, for if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. 
That's what we call dry baptism. That's not wet baptism, but Paul is using the imagery of wet baptism. He's talking about you being emerged in the Christ. That's what happened with your salvation. And then verse 6 says, you were crucified. And that means that power was nullified of your flesh. Your flesh is not supposed to have that kind of power over you. So verse number 6 said, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we are no longer to be slaves to sin. For if we have died, for he who has died is freed from sin. We free, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. We don't have to bow down to sin anymore because we've been set free. Now, I know that took us a place, but uh, let me throw this at you, just this last verse, and that's verse number two of chapter eight. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. In other words, the Holy Spirit, you have become spiritual because of the Spirit of God dwelling in you. And now you can do real war. And like I said earlier, that if you win the war in the flesh, you've already won the war with Satan and the world. Because the world needs your flesh. Satan needs your flesh. But God has already done something for you to say, neither one can have your flesh. So, beloved, we got work to do. We got to win this war. So, let's pray. Father, we thank you and we love you. We worship you and we adore you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for putting your spirit in us. Thank you that we're beginning to understand the war. So, Father, let us win for your glory and your namesake. So we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.